fine Cause you're an asshole tonight All right, jabronis, we're back. Welcome back to the Libretti Podcast Diary Show. I'm your host, Libretti. Thanks for being here today. Sorry we're back in the normal studio with the Resolute desk and the shitty audio video quality. Um, but maybe in a couple weeks I'll be back up at uh, Site Bravo um, at Pistol Pete's and my brother's house to do, you know, a nice little professional thing. Uh, we're also working on trying to get some other guests on as well. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, crazy week. Kind of a wild week that that kind of went on with me or or around me and uh, and going on, you know, in current events too as well. So right off the bat, earlier today, uh, there was a dude outside, you know, in the in the public walkway area, just outside the fence in my yard, and he was he was cranking a JO session uh, right there out there <laughs> out in the yard. Um, like it was like it was his own little bedroom. He was sitting there on the ledge, just firing one off. And you know, I had to go take care of it. So you know, I knocked on the window. I got him to to skedaddle, if you will, uh, for lack of a better term. We'll go with that terrible phrase. Um, called the cops. Cops, you know, did what they could, but uh, didn't want to be a full Karen on that one. But at this at the same time, you know. We got kids and families walking in through that walkway. You know, they don't want to go and see a a sex criminal, a deviant out there knocking out a couple of jerk offs in the middle of a neighborhood like that. So, um, you know, we got you know we got to be prepared for that next time. So, hopefully, he doesn't come back. Hopefully, the cops find him, and if not, uh, we're gonna take care of him. That's for goddamn sure. Uh, we don't need any of that crap here going on. Um, but that whole backyard situation seems to be pretty wild times. You know, earlier, a couple months ago, we had the couple, the middle-aged couple, you know, making out and getting a feelage session in pretty hardcore. And now we got jerk-off Joe in there doing his thing. So, you know, I I might just set a camera out there and start recording, creating an OnlyFans account just for just for the backyard brothel we got going on over there. I'm sure, you know, we can make a lot of money on that shit. Uh, maybe not the jerk off guy. We you know we can send that that video feed to the police so they can take care of that. Because again, we don't want predators here. But uh, you know it's a it's a party scene back there for sure, folks. So um, if ever you want to come visit and check that out, you know feel free to to, to contact me. But anyway, um, let's just get right into it so we can talk about all the other crazy shit going on this week. But uh, you know in the meantime, let's step into the cage. Okay, let's run. Today's Cage Fact is sponsored by Fran's Fanny Pack Palace. With the largest assortment of fannies on this side of the Mississippi, Fran's is sure to have what you're looking for in a totally stylish, totally not lame, totally tactical alpha fanny pack. Visit www.pantywaste.com slash loser. And get seven percent off your first tactical fanny. Seven percent. We're making moves. Franny is not fucking around, folks. Sorry, Terrence. Family show. Damn it. But Franz is going hard in the paint, offering the jabronis a big time deal of seven percent off your first fanny. So get over there now and check it out. All right. The cage fact today was actually uh, brought to my attention by a fan and a brother, the bone crusher himself, Bud. So thanks for this one. Uh, Thanks for bringing this to my attention. Um, So as you know, Nick Cage performed, you know, as Johnny Blaze in Ghost Rider, uh, a highly prolific film. And a little known fact about this, the skull that is... Johnny Blaze, when he becomes the Ghost Rider, is actually an x-ray of Nick Cage's real human skull that they used to, you know, CGI on as his movie skull. So that's his real, that's Nick Cage's actual skull in the movie as the Ghost Rider. 
And I couldn't have been happier to have known that fact, to, to find that out, uh, because it just speaks volumes to the lengths that Nick Cage will go to create you know, a, a feature, a great motion picture. So you got to appreciate the, the, the work ethic in there to, to actually get his skull x-rayed so that his skull can be the Ghost Rider skull. Absolutely fantastic. I have nothing else to say on that. Let's just uh, get into the little jabroni junction here. I don't have the, you know, the same quality of transition for the logo, but, uh, you know, you got to deal with this this B-rated amateur hour situation going on here in the in the studio. So, again, we're talking wild week on uh, jabroni junction. Uh, first, we got jerk off Joe in the yard, and then uh, we're gonna we're gonna start with baseball. So, if you notice, I'm wearing. Sleeveless today is is a jersey that we had when I played men's beer league baseball a couple summers ago here in the D.C. area. Um, quick story on that. The league, it was fun. You know, we had a good time. Uh, actually, Bone Crusher Bud played, you know, with me as well. And so did Phil Remy, the wet cat did too. So, real cast of characters in the league. But quick story here. So, this league was notoriously garbage as far as skill and competitiveness and and level, you know, of actual baseball prowess, if you will. Um, so much so that myself and Bud and the Wet Cat not only led the team, but led the league in all 10 of the offensive categories that the league tracked. So batting average, home runs, RBIs, stolen bases, uh, all that stuff. We were top five in the entire league, in every one of those 10 categories. And the next year, the team coach, the manager of the team, did not call us back to play on the team again. We were the best three players in the entire league. That's That goes to show you how bad this league was, that I was a top contender in the league. I've gone my entire baseball career riding the bench, making the team, and then being a cheerleader... And I was a top five player, not just a guy on the team with a uniform, but a top five player in the league in, in every category, and the team did not want us back. Okay, that's, that's how ridiculous that entire league was. But we got sweet jerseys out of it, sleeveless, Brewers, the Ballstein Brewers, that was the name. So that's why I'm wearing this, because it's sleeveless, and we're talking baseball. So getting right into it. Tom Brenneman, he's an announcer, play-by-play -play guy for the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, I don't follow the Reds too much, uh, but I do follow baseball, and this story obviously hit um, when, you know, if, if, you're a, if you're a baseball fan of any kind, you're going to know, you know what we're talking about here. So Tom Brenneman got caught on a hot mic uh, saying the word fag uh, in a derogatory manner, uh, and... Got busted for it. It was recording while he was on doing the live play-by-play. -play. I guess he thought his mic was off. Uh, they were at a commercial or something, and he said something derogatory towards a city using the using the hard F word. Um, and so, real real quick, I am not one bit condoning the use of that word in the derogatory manner that it was used. I don't believe in that. Uh, I, most people don't. Obviously, I, I think um, it was it was not. You know, it was ill-formed and ill-timed, as Buzz McAllister said in Home Alone 2 when, when he got busted being inappropriate. Um, but it it's not something that uh, was respectful one bit. Uh, I, I guess he said he, he said it in jest and as a joke or something off camera, but either way, it was not appropriate. I'm not condoning the, the use of the language uh, in, the, you know, in the context at all. But I do want to point out Tom Brenneman's, like, unrivaled, undying dedication to play-by-play -play for baseball. I don't know if it's a dedication or an addiction, really, but during his apology, he's given a live apology on the air during the game when he, recent, when he found out that he dropped this F-bomb on the air. He's giving what is perceived as a sincere apology, sincere apology, hello. And in the middle of the apology, he he calls a home run call. 
one of the players hits a home run, and right there in the middle, he goes and and calls the home run. Right in the middle of his apology. He's apologizing, and all of a sudden he's like, oh, and there's a home run. He doesn't change emotion. He doesn't he doesn't do anything but just like completely immediately transition into the home run play by play call. And then right back, snaps right back to the apology to finish what he started with that. Now, I I can't... I have no words to describe how incredible that was. It was like... So, have you seen the show Brockmire? Someone brought this to my attention. It's a Hank Azaria show. There's a scene where... He does the same exact thing, and it's in a TV show. There's theatrics, there's drama in it. He's given a play-by-play in a baseball game while he's talking about like his wife cheating on him, and he's continuing to call the game as he's describing the adultery. And you're thinking, wow, this is a, this is a TV show. It's completely hilarious and comical. Uh, you would never expect it to be in real life. And then literally right there in front of our fat faces, Tom Brenneman does it in real life. He's discussing a very serious situation where he says something incorrect and wrong and terrible, and he's apologizing for it, then decides to stop mid-apology, mid-quote-unquote sincere apology to call the home run by one of the Reds players. So you got to respect the dedication. Um, If it's an addiction to call and play-by-play, then he needs to see help. Um, I don't think he should get fired for it. Uh, I think that maybe he should get suspended, go to his play-by-play addiction therapy, and, uh, and hopefully he gets better. Um, you know, there's, there's so many people in high power positions, famous people that are saying stupid shit, disrespectful shit constantly, uh, and they're still around leading our free world and doing their thing. So, you know, I think Tom just needs to get his, his punishment, maybe a suspension without pay, go see some uh, derogatory t- ther- term therapy, um, and, and, you know, play-by-play addiction therapy, obviously. So... Uh, thank you for that, Tom. Um, continuing on the baseball theme right now, uh, Fernando Tatis Jr., also a baseball player. Uh, he plays for the Padres. Um, he got called out because in a game recently earlier this week on a 3-0 count, so three balls, no strikes, uh, bases were loaded. The team, the Padres, were already up, I think, by like seven runs, and they were playing the Texas Rangers. And on the 3-0 pitch, he swings at the pitch and crushes a grand slam, or hits a grand slam. It wasn't really like an upper deck or anything, but he hit a grand slam. Um, and the the Rangers management and the team started bitching about how Tatis was breaking an unwritten rule. Um, when you're up that much and it's a 3-0 count, you shouldn't be swinging 3-0. You should be taking the pitch. And it's Bush League what he did and disrespectful to the game and to the, to the Rangers and blah, 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 and crying about it like a like a beta bitch boy would because their pitcher not only can't find the strike zone, he actually, that's the, that 3-0 pitch, he was trying to throw in a different location. His, his accuracy was so piss poor that day that he couldn't even hit his spot. And he threw one right down the dick and Tatis just tagged it for a home run. That's not Tatis's fault. It's not his fault that the pitcher can't get his shit together and pitch actual strikes or paint his corners or hit his locations, he shouldn't be sitting there giving the, the pitcher a, you know, a, free, a free pass for that. The pitcher has to be better. Be better. Okay? Sorry you missed your spot. Sorry he showed you up and, and tagged it, tagged the pitch on you. Stop throwing things right down the middle. I guess he I guess he wasn't usually because he was throwing balls and walking everybody, but that's what you get. Sorry. Be a better pitcher next time. Do better. The fact that your coach is crying for you and the team said it's disrespectful and and terrible to the game is is bullshit. Okay? The 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 league is getting so soft as it is with protecting the cheater Astros players and changing the rules when you're in extra innings to have guys in running and scoring position. And all this timing stuff, and they're getting so weak and and beta when it comes to the rules and the MLB in general. There's no need to be crying about this this you know supposed unwritten rule that Tatis broke. He didn't show him up. If you watch the play, he hit a home run. He hustled around the bases. He didn't flip the bat 
or say anything or or do anything you know disrespectful to the pitcher in that regard. That's what you do, okay? When you get a pitch to hit, you swing at it. You take the attempt. I wish I was as good at Tatis when I saw a pitch like that, a mistake by a pitcher. I could tag it like that. That's probably why I was on the bench most of the time because I couldn't do that stuff. But I would if I could. And it's more disrespectful in my opinion, and I know my other baseball brethren will probably agree with this, it's more disrespectful for the team to let up even when you're up big. That just shows the other team that we think so low of you, so little of your skill set as a team and your ability to take us out that we're just going to, you know, take our pitches and walk around and, and give, you know, and just pack it in and call it a day early because we're up by so many runs. No, you want to respect the team? You play your ass off for nine straight innings to show them that that you never know when that team is going to come back and fight and compete and win. So you just got to be ready for it. And that's what I think Tatis was doing. He saw a pitch to hit. He saw an opportunity to continue helping his team create separation in the game so that his team can win. And he took that opportunity. And that's more respectful than anything else. What's disrespectful is bitching about it and crying because you got your shit pushed in and you have no other excuse for it. Besides the fact that your team was being disrespectful and it's an unwritten rule. like Give me a break with unwritten rules. There's a reason why they're not written down. Because they're bullshit rules for the most part anyway. If I got a pitch right down the dick like, like Tatis did on a 3-0 count. And I took it and I let it go by. My mother would have my head in a vice for that. There was zero tolerance in the Libretti household for pulling shit like that. So you can imagine how many times I got chewed out for doing something like that because I'm not as good as Tatis. I couldn't pick that, that, that pitch apart and swing and hit a home run off of it. I usually struck out on 3-0 pitches, found a way to strike out. So my parents, you know, let me hear about it. But there's zero tolerance for that. So good on Tatis. I hope he continues to do stuff like that. I hope baseball responds with, the you know, to the Rangers by showing them, stop crying, be better. And I hope I hope Rob Manfred doesn't dip his wick in it and, and create a, a more puss pad of an MLB. So, Rob, stay out of it. You're a terrible commissioner. You're weak. Stay out of it. Let the Alphas take care of uh, baseball justice as they have been, you know, in years past. All right, getting out of the baseball world and moving on into current event stupidity. So... Today I saw a protest uh, in front of the post office. I was going grocery shopping, and there was a USPS USPS protest going on in front of the post office uh, to save the save the post office. Don't let the current administration sabotage the post office and save it. So pro pro post office on this on this uh, protest here. Fine. I'm, I'm not going to get into the politics of this particular topic. I just want to identify the stupidity here of the entire situation. So I'm going to break it down for you, okay? So what we had here was a Sunday. People in front of the post office on a Sunday protesting to save the post office. Okay, Sunday the post office is closed. We'll identify piece number one right there. So there's nobody in the post office that they're protesting to try to save. They're closed on Sundays, okay? So it's they're protesting for an empty building, okay? Fact number one. Interesting piece number two. Let's, let's forget about the decades of corruption and financial mismanagement going on by the Postal Service, the government-run Postal Service. So let's forget about the decades of that mismanagement and corruption going on. Pretend it never happened, okay? Let's just talk about the 20 plus years of American citizens using Amazon, FedEx, UPS. What's the other one? DHL? All these other companies to deliver shit for them because the post office has been so piss poor in so many ways that they went to other entities, other businesses, other organizations 
private organizations, privately run, to get their shit delivered to them on time and, and appropriately. Let's talk about that for a second, okay? So you have people out there protesting to save the post office when they are one of the biggest reasons why the post office is going bankrupt, they're failing, they're about to die out, they're useless uh, essentially these days because of the American people, because of us, the people out there protesting for the post office, choosing to go to Amazon and FedEx and UPS because they've been crushing USPS, the Postal Service, as far as quickness of delivery, reliability, and customer service. These sheep are out there protesting for the post office because the media said it's being sabotaged and we need to save it. And it's a great organization that doesn't deserve this, this sort of treatment and, and malfeasance or whatever big words you want to use to describe it right now. So get out there and protest and take a stand for the post office. Meanwhile, you got people out there probably on their phones during the protest ordering something off of Amazon, continuing to, to destroy the business that is the Postal Service. And they probably ordered their protest posters and markers and gear on Amazon. They didn't get the Postal Service to send it because they wouldn't get it for another couple weeks and they missed the protest, they missed the rally, they wouldn't have any posters, they'd be holding up nothing. Because the Postal Service missed the mark again on it. Now, I'm not anti-post office. I'm pro-post office. My grandfather, JPL2, finally I'm talking about the real JPL2 here, was a postal worker for 30 plus years after World War II. Never missed a day. Never missed, took a sick day in 30 plus years. He has to hold the post office record. Go check in New York. I'll go check the New York Ledger and Post Office History, the Post Office Hall of Fame. Never, never took a sick day. 30 years. Every day he was out there walking the New York City streets, delivering the mail for people. So I have nothing but respect for the history of the post office and, and the postal workers. What I don't have respect for are idiots who are just blindly listening to whatever the media is telling them to think. Oh, go out there. They're being sabotaged. Save the post office. Oh, okay. I'll go save the post office even though I'm contributing to their ultimate demise. I'm also voting in the corrupt politicians that continue to mismanage the post office and the leadership that has been sinking it down, down to the shitter. I'll go, I'll, go, I'll go stand in front of an empty building on a Sunday and rally, and that'll show them. That'll do the trick, guys. We'll save the post office, all right? Let me tell you. Speaking of more stupidity, I'm gonna I'm gonna remove the politics out of this one too. But I gotta identify the stupidity here. Wild Bill Clinton is back in the news. Okay, yeah, I'm talking about pedophiles and the Epstein ring again, folks. I don't care if you don't like it. I took a week off so I can have a good episode with my brother and Pistol. To talk about a New York City legend. But I'm back on that shit. Bringing it up with people. So if you're annoyed too bad. Because I'm going to keep talking about it. But Wild Bill Clinton is back on the news. This week. Because a photo of him. Several photos of him. Have surfaced of him getting a massage. In an airport. I believe the airport was in like South Africa or something. Getting a massage by one of the victims. Of Jeff Epstein's sex pedophile ring. One of the young girls. He was in the airport waiting for the Epstein airplane to pick him up. Not two years after he was president. Pictures with this young with this young girl. Underage girl giving him a massage. Right there okay. Now. Here's the stupidity of it all. Okay. 
forget the fact that you have evidence of more connection, you know, with this guy in the pedophile ring. But when you see a guy, and we don't have to be clean, it could be any guy. If you have somebody, you know, in your organization, on your team, in your friend circle, that has been almost, I don't want to say 100% associated with, but but very strongly with good evidence associating this individual with a child sex, a pedophile sex trafficking ring, you would, you would probably stop associating yourself with that individual. Probably, right? Not the DNC. Nope, they had the, the Democratic National Convention this week. And the same... Was it the same day or the day after this photo surfaced? Like further connecting Bill Clinton to this sex pedophile sex trafficking ring? The next day, he makes a speech for the DNC, for the convention, to go talk about, you know, Joe Biden or whatever. And this is not a political thing because everybody is doing it. This is not just like the Democrat National Convention folks, whoever's leading that pack. Sweeping this under the rug. They're doing it, obviously, because they had this this alleged sex criminal up there giving a speech talking about professionalism and character and all this other bullshit. All the politicians are doing it. Everybody is hiding and keeping it under the rug. You know, the, the hardcore Christians are trying to cancel Cardi B for her wet-ass pussy song, WAP, W-A-P. That's what... The acronym stands for, in case you didn't know. They're trying to cancel her for that song. Just, the, you know, the hardcore Christian type, the puritanical Christians, the witch hunters, you know, those types. Can't get laid, those types. They canceled Aunt Jemima on the syrup because that was inappropriate somehow. Just a picture is inappropriate. Trying to cancel that. Canceling syrup. But nobody's going to cancel the Clintons. Or any of these pedophiles linked, hard linked to the sex trafficking, child sex trafficking ring? I feel like I'm losing my mind here because I can't fathom how this is continuing to go on and these people are not even being called out for it. The media isn't calling them out. The politicians on TV broadcasting out their bullshit are not calling it out. Celebrities are not calling out. They're sweeping it under the rug. It's unbelievable. I cannot believe what's going on with this crap. How does this guy get to speak at a political national convention for millions of people to listen to talking about character and professionalism? And he's hard linked in multiple occasions to, to the sex trafficking ring with children nonetheless. The absolute head turning and, and hiding and trying to forget about the rampant child sex predatorship going on in this country, in this world right now is so despicable and disgusting, I cannot get over it. And I'm going to keep talking about it, and I'm going to obsessively bring it up, and I'm going to do everything I can in my my power, my low level of ability to try to fight this and bring attention to it so that we can finally stop this and people stop making bullshit excuses why we got these pedophiles in high, high power places. It's just absolutely disgusting. And anybody who even wants to discuss this with me and, and try to argue that, well, you know, there's no, there's no proof yet. They haven't been convicted, so they're probably not doing anything wrong. You really need to ease up. Please come at me with that shit. Please. I, I beg of you to come at me and try to defend what's going on with these cover-ups and these fake suicides and the media burying these stories. It's absolutely despicable. Now, if you're on my, if you're on my level of thinking or you, know, you, you sort of think the same way, I'm not a high-level thinker by any means, but if you're thinking the same way, I have the same opinions in this regard... I, I ask, you know, go take a look at, at the different ways that you can, you know, take action on this. I'm going to get a little serious here. There's a there's a, uh, a place, they have an Instagram page. It's called Ace. 
the Alliance Against Child Exploitation. Now, these folks go out and they, they're sort of like the Chris Hansen of, you know, of Instagram and Facebook. They, um, they have stand-ins pretending to be children and get these predators to try to meet them. And then they go out and call out these predators for saying, hey, you're, you're trying to meet with a 14-year-old girl or a 12-year-old or whatever it is. Um, and they call them out, and they and they provide this evidence to the police to try to get these guys brought to justice. Finally, they're doing great work. They're a small operation. Um, they're not, you know, they're not able to get everybody arrested, unfortunately, and and do, you know, they're doing what they can. Though um, I did a little bit of research on this organization. You could go check them out. You could donate to them. It doesn't seem like their donations are going to any sort of like. Uh, political campaigns or lobbyists or there's nothing corrupt behind the scenes with this with these folks as far as where the money goes uh, but uh, go do your own research check it out if you're if you're that you know obsessed about this situation these issues as I am take a look um, I can't talk about it anymore today I'm getting I'm getting super hot and bothered you see how much I'm squirming in my seat getting so pissed off about how we have to continue talking about how nobody is, you know, everyone's giving these guys second, third, fourth, fifth chances to go continue to be predators and, and giving them, you know, pedestals to stand on and be heard and, and be seen. It's just absolutely disgusting. So I'm done for the day. Thank you for listening. I'm super hot, super heated. I got to go. I don't know what I got to go do. Do a workout. Go hang out with Jerk Off Joe. See what gets him all relaxed enough to go jerk out and pu- jerk off in public. Uh, but thanks for listening, guys. Um, uh, n- not next week, but the week after. I think I'll be back at Site Bravo. Um, I'm not sure if I'll do another guest with my brother and Pistol or if it's going to be a solo situation. Um, but let me know what you prefer. I kind of like doing the, the guests back and forth. I know Nick has been the only guest so far. Um, or we're trying to figure out a way to do other guests. Nick's got the technology. He's got the podcast prowess, if you will. So uh, he makes for a good guest. Um, and he's, he's super supportive and helps me all the time. So I have no problem making him the guest as often as I can. Um, we're going to try to get new guests on as well, though. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. If you want, continue more guests and give me your guest ideas. Go follow all the shit. YouTube, Spotify, Apple, Anchor is the Libretti Podcast Diary Show. Email me with your shit at librettipodcastdiary at gmail.com. Go follow my shit at LPD underscore show on Instagram. That's where I post, you know, treasure hunts, uh, clips, uh, other content. You know, you'll find voting polls, all that good stuff. So um, we might have a Stugats of the Week next week. We might have a poll. I'm not sure what yet. Maybe we'll have another treasure hunt. I'll try to figure out, see what's going on throughout the week. But thanks for listening to me, bitch, today. I really appreciate it. I love you guys. And, uh, you know, stay strong. I was talking to your mother